darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Church, and for all of you watching on lo- online, um, what's up? Good to see you. Um, you know, this is Good Friday, and uh, traditionally, Christians spend some time um, reflecting, um, somber moments. Many churches do different things. Um, today, we just wanted to have a scripture reading, maybe a little discussion, and um, if you're logging in for the first time, maybe you don't know City Hope Church, I'm Steve uh, Schick, the pastor here. This is my wife, Allie. And uh, we're glad that you could tune in with us. Um, we're going to be doing this live again Sunday, 1015, and we want to encourage you. You know, right now, I'm really proud of everybody. You're, you've been staying home, working on flattening that curve. And uh, it, the best way you can have an impact right now, other than supporting community organizations, prayer, and taking wise precautions, is 
um, for City Hope purposes, you can share um, our feed, our page with a friend. In fact, um, that video you just watched is now live on, face, on YouTube, and uh, we'll have a link to that on our website, city-hope.com, and you can share that with friends, send a link, text it to them, whatever, all that good stuff. And uh, we would encourage you to invite a friend uh, to watch with us Sunday morning. Um, we're going to have live music, live message Sunday morning um, right here on this Facebook page. And, and for anybody who doesn't have Facebook, which there's a few people out there who don't, um, you can watch that whole service again on YouTube at 1 p.m. the same day. Um, so yeah, we, we're doing everything we can um, to try to connect with, the, uh, connect with you with the community, and today we just wanted to share that song, man. The team did such an awesome job. Thank you, Allie. Um, I think we spent probably five hours recording on that, and I know all the team members spent quite a bit of time, and, and uh, PR spent a lot of time editing that, and so really grateful for our team to do that. I think that was cool, man. Um, I loved hearing that electric guitar come in. That was, that was sweet. Um, so wherever you are watching, I encourage you to take a few moments if you can. Um, I know for some, you, you're maybe in your work day and you're watching on a phone or maybe you're um, at home. Whatever the situation is, I encourage you, if you want to take a few minutes, we're just going to have a little bit of a discussion and a scripture reading and some prayer. Um, and while we do that, just to break the ice, I just think, man, what about that song? That's a, it's a powerful song. And we kind of came to our knowledge around Christmas time, and we just were thinking about what song would be appropriate for Good Friday. And um, man... The words of that song are really cool. What drew you guys to the song? Like, why'd you pick that song? Well, uh, we thought about a few different songs, but King of Kings stuck out to us because it really tells the whole story. Um, from the beginning of it, talking about Jesus coming to earth, being, being the Messiah, coming the way he did, and then um, dying on the cross for our sins, knowing what, what the weight of that was, and then resurrecting, it, it tells the whole story. And when you enter into Good Friday and Easter, and you're celebrating that and, and reflecting on Jesus, um, the whole story is important to think about because it's, um, it's got a weight to it and a significance to it that changes lives. So that's why we picked it. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, Mike actually re recorded that uh, guitar part from Georgia. So, I mean, that's cool. Everybody's spread out. Everybody's at home, but we're still unified in our mission, our vision, and our heart. Um, so, I think that's, I, th I got like, I was holding back tears the first time I saw that because it's just powerful to see the team come together. And what a fitting song to come together around, in my opinion. I think that's cool. So, this would be a cool th song to share with friends. I would just encourage you to think about that. Um, you know what really resonated with me? I wrote down some of the lyrics here. Um, you did not despise, well, actually, hold on, let me back up, to reveal the kingdom coming, to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross, for even in your suffering you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. You know, I, I'm just reflecting on that as a powerful statement, knowing this was our salvation, you know, what did, did that really resonate with you? What do you think about it? It did. Um, the fact that Jesus went to the cross, died willingly for our sins, but had the power to not do so holds so much weight. And um, I just think about my own story for such a long time in my life knowing a lot about God, but not really having a personal relationship with him, not really accepting him as savior and um, not really allowing him to be God in my life. Um, I see as I look back how he continually pursued me and put things in my path for me to really see who he is and, and who he was. And um, it's just so significant to think of Jesus willingly going to the cross, um, suffering a death that really we deserve for our sake, and um, not leaving it there, but rising again and absolutely conquering every shred of logic we had about what that death would mean. He rose again, and um, for me, it's significant because he did it anyway, 
One, knowing that he'd conquer it, but two, knowing that I needed his death on the cross, that I couldn't bear it, and that he didn't want me to get what I deserved, so he took my place. It's, it's amazing. I, I think it's some things that fascinate me about it is like thinking like we, it seems almost like common sense to think, okay, death bad, life good. So why are, so then you go to a church service the first time, and maybe you're tuning into a Good Friday thing, and they're like talking about death. It's like a funeral, a funeral, a funeral, a funeral, and, and uh, or you go in church service, and you hear them sing about blood, and you're like, what? Why is this about blood? This is getting kind of weird. It makes me feel uncomfortable, and, and um, I understand that, like, if you're new to faith or new to Christianity, some of those things can seem really weird, but what we do understand, and if I could tie it in, is to know, like, we all resonate with someone who gave their life for us. I think we love those stories, whether it's a superhero story or um, the story of, I think about the movie, what was it, Saving Private Ryan? I mean, some of the most moving stories we've ever heard of are a sacrificial, um, someone giving their life for others so that they could be rescued or, or whatever. And um, I was thinking about it, and I thought, okay, his resurrection proved he's God, but his death proved his love. You know, that, and that's the thing, like, he loved us so much, he laid down his life for us, and, and so, you know, one of the things of what we would want to do today is, is, like, try to help bring clarity, you know, if, if you're out there and you're thinking, what's this whole Christian thing about, or what's this whole um, notion behind this, it's, why do we even think about death, and was we know that he actually took our death, and so that we think that's a huge deal, um, because it changed history, I mean, it changed my life, so, um, there's some verse we want to read in Matthew. I don't know if you're in a place right now, you could grab this on your phone, or you could grab this on a, a hard copy of the Bible, open this up, but um, Matthew 27, and I'm going to read a portion, and Allie's going to read a portion, and we're just going to talk about it for a few minutes, and then we want to have a special prayer, um, some Good Friday um, prayer for everybody out there. Um, it says, Matthew 27, verse 40, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and scribes and elders mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. If he's the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. Um, they kind of put some strings on believing in, in Jesus. Um, if he can, they're standing there, they're seeing this man crucified, he claimed to be God, and they're saying, well, if he comes down from the cross, then that will prove he, he is who he said he was, he, you know, that would be a miracle, and then we will believe in him. Um, I actually don't believe them, I, I think that they are still mocking him, and they wouldn't have believed no matter what he would have done. This is similar to my story, you know, you shared briefly about some of your story. My story, um, when I, before I trusted in Jesus, I was standing back and really analytical, but I was saying, I won't believe in God unless he proves himself to me. And, you know, I almost wish I could go back in time and speak to that, to that young version of myself and say, he did prove himself to me. And um, I think that's what, when you look at this passage, is really interesting, because he says, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. They don't, number one, they don't even realize what they're asking. They, they're, you, and I would say to apply that, you know, they don't realize that they're asking Jesus to come down from the cross, that would mean if he came down from the cross, then that would mean he didn't pay for our sins, and that would mean uh, Christianity basically wouldn't exist. That would have an impact uh, historically, eternally. Um, so they have no clue of the ramifications of what they're actually saying, first of all. And I, and I apply that, and I think about this. You may be asking God for some proof that he exists, but the thing you're asking for could hurt others in a way you don't even realize. And that's part of having faith, is realizing that there is a sovereign God of the universe who knows better than me. I, I mean, I might be asking for something in my egocentric, I see Steve's world, you know, I see, and then I zoom out a little, and I see Steve and Allie's world, and I zoom out a little bit more, and I see Steve and Allie in my girl's world, and I zoom out a little bit more, and I see Steve, Allie, and my family, and maybe my community, and I try to think about the world, but let's be honest, a lot of times we're just thinking about me, 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 and, and that's never really thoroughly challenged in our culture. But Jesus does challenge that. He's like pointing us to realize that, that he had to do this. They don't even realize. So maybe you're out there and you're like, God, fill in the blank. If you do this, 
then I will believe in you. Because that was my story. And what we have to realize is that the story of Christianity is a story of history. So we're looking at not, we do look at what God is doing now, but we also firstly look to, is Jesus historically who he said he was, and did he do what he said he would do, first and foremost? And so, you know, I kind of think about, they were looking for the proof to be that he would come down from the cross. I think the proof that he is who he said he was is that he stayed on the cross, because he said he would die. If he would have came down from the cross, he'd be a liar. Um, so anyway, I just think about that. I think the miracle is not if he would have came down from the cross while he's dying for us. I think the miracle would be that he stayed on the cross as a sacrifice to pay for our sin. You know, one of the most moving things I ever thought about was that on the cross, there's one time in, in the whole Bible where Jesus prayed lots of times, but there's one time that he prayed and he didn't call God his father. That was on the cross. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, you fast forward to Paul, and Paul comments on that, and he says, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. And that's a substitute payment. That's what Good Friday is about. That's what the cross is about, is realizing that someone was our substitute payment for sin, for atonement, that they, he paid for what we couldn't pay for ourselves. And then fast forward to another statement of Paul, and he says, now because of that, so there's been a substitute payment for all of our wrong, because of that, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, Allie's going to jump in and read the rest of the passage there. So this is Matthew 27, starting in verse 45. It says this, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and rocks were split. The tombs were also opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. So we see the very, very last details of Jesus' death. And the Roman centurion, the guard, and the people who were watching him as he died and who were keeping an eye on him, when they saw these things, they were amazed. And this Roman guard who did not subscribe to Judaism, to believing in Christ, to any of those things, was just completely blown away by what had just happened. It references the curtain in the temple. And at that time, Jewish people would go to the temple to have access to God. And there was this very, very large, thick, curtain that went across the temple and it separated the people from where God's presence was. And the minute that Jesus died, miraculously, with no one around, it, this huge thick curtain tore, not just on the side, not just a little bit, not just wear and tear, it completely from the top of it in the middle, straight to the bottom, tore in two. And all of a sudden there was an earthquake and rocks were splitting. I don't know if you've ever tried to split a rock, but that's no easy feat. And this Roman guard stood there completely amazed. And he says, it's recorded in scripture, truly, this was the son of God. It was a moment of complete understanding, maybe not complete understanding. It was a moment of understanding that this guy is who he says he is. How could this happen apart from this being truth? And, you know, maybe it was the fact that it was the miracles. He's seeing rocks split in front of him and the earth shaking. And he hears of the temple, you know, veil, as they called it, 
completely tearing in two and he's just thinking, oh my gosh, I should have taken him seriously. Or, you know, maybe it was the fact that he was moved in his heart and in his spirit by what Jesus had done. But either way, his, his opinion changed about, about Jesus. And bringing this all together, that is our hope for anybody. That perhaps today you're sitting and listening to this or you've been sitting and listening to this, these, these uh, live streams, or maybe you're listening to other things. And this week as we approach Easter, you have a question about who is Jesus and what is this all about in a real way. And our hope is that your opinion might change about Jesus, that you would see Jesus Christ for who he is, that he is the savior who died for you, not just for me, not just for Steve, not just for the people that you know who are already Christians, but for you, for your sins, past, present, and future. And, and that's what we want for anyone today. Apart from being in church ministry and, and being here and doing services and singing songs, really none of that all matters in comparison to Christ and if people know Christ. And that is our heart. We want people to know who Jesus is because he absolutely changed our lives. And no matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter what we face or circumstances we are walking through, Jesus has changed our lives. And even in our darkest moments, when we think there is absolutely no hope, what are we going to do? Christ is there, having already suffered death on the cross, all of our sins, all of our mistakes, our misjudgments, our pain and brokenness and burdens, he bore on his shoulders for us. And he conquered death. And today is the day Good Friday, that we reflect upon his great love to die on a cross willingly, willingly, even though he could have called a thousand angels to get him down. He could have just said, I'm not going to do this anymore, but he didn't because he thought of us personally. That is the God that we serve. And, and that is the God that died for our sins. That is who Jesus is. And we want you to know that today. Um, we would just love to pray with you right where you're at, in your home or in your car, wherever you are watching this and participating and listening, or maybe you'll watch it later. We want to pray for you and with you that, that Jesus would become clear to you, that his presence would be real in your life, that today you would um, open your heart and open your eyes. Don't have a hard heart towards him. Take him for who he really is. And um, reach out if you have questions. We want you to know him. Let's pray together. God, we are so thankful for your great love. We are thankful that when sin entered this world and began to affect people and the world itself, everything about us is affected by sin that you said I will send a savior. God, we are so thankful that you sent Jesus, perfect in human form, not just to teach us, not just to teach us love, not just to teach us what is truth, not just to challenge us when we think we know better, but to die in our place. God, you say in your word that the punishment for sin is death. The payment for sin is death. And that death is not just an earthly death, but it is separation from you. God, thank you for making a way. Symbolically, you tore that veil in real life. And that was a symbol we could forever hold on to, that you tore down the obstacles in between us and you so that we could be your sons, your daughters, so that we could accept you and your gift of salvation. And Jesus, right now, I pray for anyone who is listening or who will listen. God, I just pray that you would do what you do and be real to us. Let your presence be known. 
God, you know us in and out. You know what we are walking through. You know what we are combating and fighting against. You know our worries and the things that lay heavily upon us. You know our fears. God, the doubts and the distrust, the pain and, and the things that we have carried for so long, you know all of those too. The mistakes, the sin, the things that we don't want to admit to anybody, you already know. And God, today I just ask that you would be with that one person or maybe more who is sitting there wondering, should I believe in you, Jesus? Should I give you a chance? And we just ask that you would meet them right there where they're at. That's how you do it. And that they would come to know you, that they would see you and believe in you today and make the exchange, our sin for your sacrifice, our pain and burdens for your love. Jesus, we ask that you would continue to be with us as believers. There's believers who are listening in today and I pray that you would remind them of how you saved them. God, let them be flooded with the memory of when it was that they understood who you were and that they themselves made that exchange for your salvation. I pray that we would be overwhelmed with gratitude today and that we would remember that yours is the victory. God, you say in Romans that there is no height, no depth, no thing on this earth that can separate us from your love. You say that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, and that is Jesus. As believers, let us have strength in your love. Let us move forward today in the face of anything that we are up against, knowing that you love us and that yours is the victory, that you give power, that you give understanding, that you give wisdom, and that you give us courage to continue to move forward. God, the race is yours, and we are running it, waiting for the day to see you face to face. We thank you for your love, and we thank you that on Friday, when you died, and it seemed like there was no hope, and that darkness was going to overcome, that you said that Sunday was coming, that you reminded us that three days later, you would absolutely take the sting out of death and rise again. We thank you for that. Not just that you did it, but that you continually remind us that you rose again. You conquered death for us. And we have hope because we have you. We love you so much, Jesus, and we thank you for who you are. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Um, his resurrection proved he's God. His death proved his love. Uh, maybe you're out there and honestly, you have every right to reject or accept Jesus. Um, our hope is that you would, um, we obviously would love you to accept him, trust in him, but I think it's important, whether you accept him or reject him, I think it's important to understand him. And that's what we've tried to do, and to look to the scriptures to understand him. And maybe this is a good day, today, tonight, tomorrow, despite anything we could ever say, look to the scriptures yourself, look you know, a lot of people have been watching the movie Passion of Christ, a, a, a pretty accurate portrayal. Maybe that's an appropriate thing for you and your family to do today, tonight. Um, I'd, I'd warn you, it, it's going to rip your heart out <laughs> when you see what Jesus has done for you. And um, we, we would love you to understand him before you make a decision to reject him. So look to the scriptures, read the historical accounts of what happened. And um, if God's speaking to your heart today, I would encourage you, um, whether that is someone who's going from not faith to faith or someone who you have faith and today just encourage you, I encourage you to go on to um, city-hope.com slash next steps. Um, there you can let us know if you've put faith in Jesus, if you'd like to be baptized, if you have other questions about faith, you can reach out to us and that's a great way that the next step from what you just heard, maybe if it's prompted you in your spirit and you say, you know what? I really, I'm really moved. There's your next step. And then um, I'd also, and then again, this is not self-promoting. Um, this is just trying to get the word out about what Jesus is. Um, so if you feel led, I would encourage you to take 
some time to go on our, our YouTube page, hit subscribe, and then share this video that we shared with you today of our, our band who worked on that song. And again, it's a moving song about the story of Jesus, and we just wanted to get the word out. So we invite you to do that. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here um, Sunday, 10-15. Um, God bless you. Stay healthy um, and, and take care.